Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in Hoi 4, TWR, the Thousand Week Reich, in which we're playing as a beautiful, kind of dusty, United States of America. So last time we kind of talked about the new mechanics, or just TWR in general, the world as it is, and established that we kind of want a, uh, an interesting campaign. Oh, we already had this already opened, okay. RSS has been defeated. Uh, let's hope this ends the violence down here in India, maybe or something like that. Anyways, 45% support in the House of Representatives, if I could speak correctly, and oh, Italy wins the EFC, the Football Cup, and then we have 50% support in the Senate. Now, it would probably be good if we did that as well. Right now, we're trying to build ourselves up as we're preparing for any potential conflict, especially something that could happen in Germany. With all this extra political power, we could do some interest rate stuff, but we're not going to do that. Last time we established that we could have nuclear strikes. We can close that, close that, close that for now. We might as well spend some political power. Now, it said earlier that if we get... Um, Enough support. We can get even more political power. So, how about we just try to max out the Senate as fast as possible? We could try that. And apparently, green is good for us. Red is no good, but red, but green is. Uh, but we do have, a, have to go over a couple comments. Uh, re resigns somewhere. Malayan emergency. You know, things happen. Things happen. Regardless, we're still training your navy, which is great. Uh, someone recommended I play as the United States, of course, in the Thousand Week Reich again, but. In TNO, the New Order, Last Days of Europe. I will get there, I promise. I will play as much of America as I possibly can, but we have to talk about our veterans. They're everywhere, clutching signs that seem too jaunty for their ruined faces. Help an army boy out. Tokyo or bus. This was for Pearl Harbor. On the streets from New York to San Francisco. The hungry, disposed, and the fearful. And the scarred. Six years after the surrender of Japan, their ca last casualties live on in, in people seared by atomic fire. And in invisible wounds that will never heal so long as their carriers remain alive. Radiation poisoning was a poorly understood topic at the time of the bombings in the Olympic campaign, and its true effects first came to light with the treatment of thousands of U.S. soldiers suffering what would become known as advanced radiation sickness. Air burst type weapons ripped tons of radioactive earth into the earth like a hammer of the gods, spraying it on the field, on the field towards friend and foe alike, sending invisible bullets through concrete, metal, cloth, and flesh. The monstrosities recorded in the civilian death toll, and the overwhelming of hospitals in the newly occupied Japan made the headlines worldwide, but the cancers and prolonged burns the nuclear bombings induced were only discovered later, and the Veterans Medical Administration continues to struggle with patients if it, it cannot afford to treat. Despite this, many vets across the nation remain proud of their efforts, saying that they would have done it again had they the chance. But each winter, there are fewer of them as they collapse in the hospital and die of horrific, horrific tumors. And more are saying that the government had failed in its duty to those who had served it, claiming that American ideal means little to what... To those who must now suffer the mistargeted wrath of the Eagle Sword. Quite worrying. Of course, we lose double support in the Senate after I got 5% more support. Oh, no. That was Senate and the House of Representatives. Well, okay, you know, things happen. 1.76 of political power day now. That's fine. Uh, someone recommends I do nuke Germany. That's a plan. Conservatives win the UK. That's cool. Uh, let's see, we have 51% for liberals, 49% for conservatives. Good enough. Uh, yeah, nuke Germany. That's my plan eventually. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some advanced competing machines. It'd be good for more research. Speed, 3%. It's pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit more decryption, though, side channel tech, for one more decryption, which would be great. Very great. Another comment was for me to also play as France, probably the French state they're talking about, which I will eventually, led by Wagen right now, so play as France, but also play as the UK. There's actually quite a bit of support for me to play as the UK. Uh, I'll get there eventually, like, I totally will, I just don't know when, because there's so many mods out now, with so much, with a good amount of content, that, uh, I don't know. Denounce Mosley is um Hmm Labor Conservatives in winning Korea, okay, interesting. Mosley's Union. Huh. It's an Easter egg path added for fun. It's a player only path, not according counted for the for the rest of the game, and playing Mosley will likely cause game breaking issues. Proceed at your own risk and enjoyment. Oh cool. So with the DNC and the RNC. So I'm only going to read pretty much one. Uh, I'll read both. So today is the day that the Republican National Convention begins. All four of the Republican candidates and for the nomination have arrived, and away the delegates' choice. If it's not yet clear who will take the nomination, as the delegates are at best divided on all four candidates. No matter who's chosen, though, they'll have to go up against the Democrats who will later choose this month or at the same time. Nevertheless, the Republican nomination goes to somebody. Now we have to choose here carefully because I did say I want to go with MacArthur because he says no appeasement. Right there, no appeasement. So. Let's go ahead and choose MacArthur. I could choose Taft. There was a comment yesterday saying that Taft, if you choose Taft, you can get cooed. So that's kind of cool. We're going to go with MacArthur for now on the DNC. Uh, today's the day that the Democratic National Convention begins. All four of the Democratic candidates for the nomination have arrived and await the delegates' votes. While some expect Truman to take the nomination after serving eight years in the presidency and being allowed to run once more, other Democratic candidates, such as Ke 
Kefalver, and Stevenson are good rivals. No matter who's chosen another, the Democrats must face against Republicans for the first time in four years. The Democratic nomination goes to... It sounds like we don't have the amendment that limits the amount of times a person can run for presidency. But, let's see. Um, Truman? This dude? That dude? Or that dude? Um, Truman? I think eight years is enough for him. Thurman? That basically just kind of hands the election to MacArthur, probably. So, Independence Day, the best day in the world. Today, America celebrates her Independence Day. It was on this day in 1776. that the Continental Congress ado adopted our Declaration of Independence from Great Britain, written by Thomas Jefferson. The words are etched into in eternity, serving as pure inspiration to freedom-loving people throughout the world. Indeed, it is evident that our nation has served as an idea, an idea that guides the world forward. At the time of our Declaration, few republics had stood the test of time. But our act was revolutionary, not just in America, but the world. It's important that we reflect on the state as a lesson. A lesson that teaches us freedom in a time where we face greater threats to our liberty around us. We must never let liberty's torch go out, lest it no longer be shine and light to show us from evil. America, America, God sheds his grace on thee. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I want to launch strike so badly, but we can't do that yet. Thurman secures nomination, one of the Democratic Party's remaining arch-conservatives, and a longtime supporter of the state's rise in segregation. Strom Thurmond has been chosen by the Democratic Party as a presidential candidate. He represents the conservative of the Democratic Party side, creating a shift back towards the right for the Democrats and will run against the Republicans in the coming election. Get in the fight for states' rights? Well, well, we'll see what happens. PRI, cool. I think that's Mexico. Over here, we've got a sub. And we've got subbies around here, so that's pretty good. Y'all keep training, having a good time. MacArthur's been nominated. The F American five-star general, field marshal of the Philippine Army, has won the Republican nomination for the presidency. MacArthur's long wish for the presidency, according to many. His interventionist and conservative views earn him the biggest share of the delegates. Many of his opponents worried that if MacArthur was to win the nomination and presidency, the five-star general would be far more aggressive than any other president. Nonetheless, he has won and now most face the Democrats. I like Doug. Well, actually, this is weird. I guess Thurman was a conservative, and MacArthur's also conservative, so basically you're voting for two conservatives, which is really weird. But one of them is much more uh, aggressive and more of a war hawk, but the U.S. Navy, uh, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, we can keep doing, going down that way. I did say I want to go down here so we can get the dockyards out faster, faster, faster. So Naval Station Norfolk. For about 100 years now, the U.S. has had a two-ocean navy, capable of projecting power in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. Our vessels demonstrated their superiority to the world in the war against Japan, but our Atlantic presence is much less secure. To counter this, we must turn our naval base in Norfolk, Virginia, into a dagger pointed directly at Berlin. Perhaps most of all, though, it is the U.S. Navy that was tested and excelled in the last war, despite Japan's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. The U.S. Navy, backed by industrial might of America behind him, rose up to the task. Its carriers comp comprehensively smashed those of the Japanese and decisive battles for control over the Pacific. Open up the way to an invasion of Japan. More than anything else, the war taught that the age of battleships is over and carriers now rule the seas. The U.S. Navy has certainly taken this lesson to heart, constructing a huge number of carriers to rule the seas per and project naval air power rapidly across the continents. Today, America's Navy has taken the title of the world's strongest from the British, and expansion continues even as the largest carrier, or larger carriers, designs are discussed. The next war, just like the last, will show the importance of control of the seas. It's important that America is ready. Non sibi sed petre. Cool, and UFOs spotted over Washington, D.C. They'll call it the Washington Flap. The Washington Invasion, the crisis in the capital skies. This is where it starts. At Washington National Airport, and two people hunched over a grimly, or grimy, screen glared at something that could be transparently impossible. Fifteen miles southwest of the city, away from the Ireland trajectories, seven objects are flying erratically. Harry Barnes, senior ATC officer, will later tell the press that the movements were completely radical compared to each other of ordinary aircraft. The two glanced anxiously... Uh, at each other. Could this be new? Unannounced Luftwaffe flight from Germany. The phone to Andrews Air Force Base lies an ominously on the desk. No one wants to be responsible for starting the next world war over the skies of the nation's capital. Nearby controllers start yelling in concern and confusion. The little blips have been uh, started appearing in every direction on every screen in the room. At, as of at 11.07 a.m., Washington, D.C. is surrounded by anomalous airborne radar objects. In a panic, Andrew Air Force Base is dialed and the airman on the phone answers in mounted confusion to an ATC officer so hysterical he is initially assumed to be under narcotic influences. The Air Force Base Tower begins reporting signs of an object like an orange ball of fire trailing a tail before the object veers off at high speed. Sightings and reports continue throughout the day, some believable, others less so. Three Air Force star f or jets attempt to sortie with the intruders, but the objects vanish only to reappear when the jets return to base. The last sighting comes at 5.30 a.m. on July 20th, and by then, the incident is in every newspaper outlet in North America, smeared in big flashing headlines. Invasion from another world, American capital attack, what in the heavens is going on? Well, I'm not sure what's really going on, since we don't have Strengeheim. So, I mean, we have some Strengeheim. But not real Strangeheim. So, House of Representatives criticized policy. Debates rages in the House of U.S. 
and the U.S. House of Representatives as opposition representatives fiercely attack the policies pursued by the current administration. Fiery speeches are held throughout the long hours, as even some of those representatives in the same party as the president began to be persuaded against the policies of their own administration. If we let it continue, it seems that these debates will negatively impact our support in the House, which can make it harder to pass legislation and enact policies in the future. We could attempt to hit back, instructing our lower representatives to defend the president's administration and denounce those who criticize him not as having the good of the country at heart, but such a strategy could easily backfire if we are seen as too belligerent. Um... We'll just use this path pretty much every single time. 50, 45%. Let's see what happens. Maybe nothing happened. Cool. Um, from here on out, when they get stuff like that for the Senate House of Representatives, I'm just going to let it go on. Uh, we've, I've read it twice now, so we have the press conference. The breeding, briefing room is packed with journalists that there's barely room to breathe. Although these journalists are not from the highbrow press outlets that normally attend an armed forces briefing. Officers stand to attention watching this crowd with tense eyes and alert postures. The whole nation is on edge and more now than ever need an explanation. Uh, and it's needed from those who say they are watching the nature's skies. It is, they say it is the highest turnout for a press conference since the beginning of the Pacific War. The major generals walk into the room and crowds rise, applauding as they take their seat. Roger Ramsey, the USAF, USAF Director of Operations, and John Sanford, Director of Intelligence, are brief in their opening comments. And they emphasize that there is no need for popular panic and that the phenomena observed during the Washington, D.C. incident were in fact entirely explainable by natural causes, although, of course, many of them have been too poorly documented to be applicable. He points out natural light sources like light sources or passing aircraft far overhead on classified paths only available to the military. Sanford comments that hundreds of similar encounters by the USAF jets have been logged in records, and in fact, there's a team investigating such causes to make them better understood. He calls them the Project Blue Book. The Major Generals leave satisfied that they had calmed the American public down, but what the public really hears is that the government has no idea what the vis visitors are either, that they have a uh, project hoarding needed data from the American public, and that the project is called the Blue Book. Over the course of the next week, the Air Force bases around the country are overwhelmed with calls and correspondence, and Project Blue Book appears on desks across the nation. The press conference has failed. Well, we tried. Japan right now the right to war. Good. For now. For now, of course. Panic. Oh my gosh, how much more of this? So, over the course of the next few weeks, the nation works itself into a frenzy. Sighting continue with the airport itself and nearby planes enter the city uh, on radar screens, both civilian and air force, and in the minds of millions of Americans. Iodine salt sales go through the roof and swords run dry in five days. The nation is bracing itself for an invasion from the skies, and who is to say that this will not be presented by atomic fire that have come to so know so well across the Pacific? The manager of Project Blue Book comes to monitor the ATC tower, but refuses to answer questions. Answer questions. He watches over the next few days as screens continue to report the anomalous entries across this airspace above the capital. This only fuels the speculation further, and by the end of the month, pundits comment that perhaps the manager is in league with the visitors. In fact, great many earthly powers are being blamed for the incidents, chief among them the fascists across the Atlantic. After all, the Germans stand the most to gain from the attack on Washington and who is to say that their claims about the present city of the Luftwaffe are not some kind of cover-up? One incident in particular will captivate the American media and government. Bright lights are causing flashing on the surface of the river near the national airport. In bizarre patterns that defy logic, but they appear to be organized. Pundits yell into cameras about how this is clearly an attempt to communicate and independent codebreakers to get to work. Five days later, the news comes, from, comes out that this is simply another Air Force experiment to communicate the, through focused light signals that happen to be reflected by a passing balloon. Balloon? Nobody believes it, and for months after the incident, the Potomac will be crowded with tourists with industrial flashlights attempting to signal back at the visitors until, in desperation, the D.C. district issues a blanket ban on industrial torches on incoming fights. Alright, everyone, this is getting out of hand. Please go home. There's nothing to see here. Probably. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Oh, and they're still fighting in Africa. Then again, it is Africa. What do you expect? Barbary People's Republic, huh? Do you have a focus tree? Or, well, I guess you're gone. There goes the end of the Algerian War. A new arms age. Do you have a, do you have a unique focus tree? Uh, not really, but they do have this. The Algerian War begins, which is pretty cool. Unidentified Nazi observers. Oh my goodness. Friends, you're listening to the Los Alamos talk show, the late night edition. It's Jerry here, and tonight I want to talk to you about the mysterious metallic visitors cruising through American skies. The fascist horde looks in Europe, and now the integrity of American soil, water, blood, and precious bodily fluids is being compromised by these beings from another world. No one knows where they're coming from, and our boys in the Air Force are staying tight lipped, especially in the invasion of Washington, D.C. last month. Thank you for your service, man. So, I want to ask those listening tonight Are you two connected? Are the two connected? Could we be facing an invasion of national socialist Nep Neptunians? Are we facing a, a mock de Greifung from Mars? And is Germania conducting an interplanetary conspiracy against the, these great United States of ours to ensure freedom, liberty, and democracy and all American apple pie is snuffed out on this little world before it threatens others? Stay tuned as we delve into mysterious plans from the extraterrestrial realm on Los Alamos' best and only late night talk show with me, Jerry DeSantos. And now, a word from our sponsors. This is absolutely historical. What is this nation come to? Someone called the Fuhrer, we need to know what is, if he has a phone line to Venus. I wonder if some men in black will stop by my door tonight. Men in black. Okay, I'll click on that for that. For the funsies. Alright, we let's get some more Senate support. I want absolute Senate support and decryption. Well, if we get high enough decryption, we should be able to figure out what's going on, right? Hmm. 
Hunt dots lost his abilities for space of next frontier. What may any long feared have now has become indisputable. The Germans are going into space. It's now clear that the Nazis is experimenting with the utilization of space as a new frontier. This, of course, represents a great security threat to our nation. Should we not be able to respond? Perhaps we should look into that direction, too? We cannot fall behind. Covered up. Covert preparations completed now. All the necessary preparations have been made. We can now attempt to support a coup in the country and overthrow its government. Ah, I love Cuba. There is, of course, some unavoidable chance of failure, but the best chance to succeed is now. Oh, hold on. We got up here. Space is humanity's next frontier, and the Germans have perhaps had a head start in utilizing it. If the U.S. is to maintain security and combat Nazism, it must be a leader in the arena of space and perform both civilian and military space activities. And China's gone to war. We could criticize interventions as the war's broken down in Southeast Asia with the national Chinese government invading communist Vietnam in the hopes of installing a puppet nationalist Vietnamese government. While China was a valuable island in the fight against Japan, their interest in Asia clashed with ours and a victory in Vietnam would surely be a cause or a major expansion of Nanjing's power. It would therefore may be in our best interest to see that China don't win. Create the NAXA. Oh, we need more support in the house. Oh, allows future space decisions? Okay. Orbital rockets? Well, I guess so much for trying to get more, uh, Senate support. The sound of Vietnamese war. We definitely gotta criticize intervention, though. We have to get there. Uh, let's see. Nuclear strikes. The sound of Vietnamese war as the Chinese army continues to pour into Vietnam. It's become clear that this is a deliberate full-scale invasion by a former ally. While we may not be the biggest supporters of a communist regime ordinarily, China's recent expansion threatens our position in the Far East and Pacific. This is the most recent invasion clearly shows that Nanjing, or Nanking, has set its sights on regional hegemony. A clear threat to our own interests and those of our allies. The discussions will have to be held on what to do about this crisis. Woo! Federal Reserve, we don't want to talk about you right now. Launch the... Oh. We can launch a coup. Hmm. I want to do this. But I want to criticize the intervention first. And then I want to launch the coup. Uh, yeah, and then we'll create Na Naxa. Maybe. Let's do it in that order. Let's see what happens. I think last time we were training these guys, yeah, I believe we were. Omar Bradley, he's a field marshal. Great general. Aggressive assaulter, yes please. Oh. Wait, hold on. Aggressive assaulter, actually, yeah, that's, that's good. Naval, Naval Station Norfolk. Great, we'll read you very soon. You know, U.S. Air Force is nice. Uh, U.S. Army, no, nether elections, that's fine. Let's go ahead and grab the next dockyard expansion. So, Naval Station San Diego. Although our hold over the Pacific is stronger than what we have in the Atlantic, we should still ensure that our hegemony remains intact. This Naval Base in San Diego, California, can help with this. Good. What are we building? Uh, let's see. Carrier. Good. We need some chromium. Convoys. Uh, goodbye. Subs are not bad. Uh, let's see. Over here. Let's go ahead and convert you guys. Rapid fire guns. There we go. Level 2 is fine. Uh, fire control 2 is fine. Radar level 1 is fine. I just want to see if there's anything else here. Nope, nope. Level 2 is fine. Uh, hmm. For you, rapid fire. Oh, I don't know why you had that on. There you go. Get some more anti-air. And then rapid fire. There you go. No heavy attack, which is fine. Actually, we get less speed. We get less HP, but we get quite a bit more organization. 40 more. Wow. Okay, that's good. More light attack. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. And we're going to make two of these at a time. Oh, and before we do that... There you go. Good, good. Um, I'm going to put you at the bottom, actually, because I still want to make some electricity. That would be very good as well. Put you down in... a Virginia. That would be fine. That would be fine as well. Great. So, Naval Station Norfolk. During the early 40s, America's naval mind was focused on the Pacific during the fight of the enemy of Japan. Now, however, it's a new enemy has taken hold across the Atlantic. The focus of our own sea power must increasingly face a new arena. Part of this is the need for larger naval bases on the East Coast, especially as we build larger and larger carriers and other vessels. To this end, the naval operating base in Norfolk, Virginia, will be renamed Naval Station Norfolk, and its infrastructure expanded significantly to form the centerpiece of our Atlantic strategic naval strategy. The seas will remain ours to control. Well, hopefully. Let's see what happens. Because I want to criticize it eventually, or quickly. And then aid Vietnam, and then have a UN resolution to stop them. Suburban growth across America, a huge shift in geography is taking place. The recent easy availability of the automobiles, allowing millions of wide and middle class Americans or families to move into rapidly expanding suburbs. As the car ownership explodes, densely populated urban areas are in many cases declining, being abandoned by white middle class Americans who set up for a new life far beyond. An idealized vision of large homes and cars with wide picket fences has become the new American dream. There are also those who point to supposed long term problems of the sort of car based urban planning, or that lack thereof, but they are mostly dismissed as. Ludites, Ludites, holding back the inevitable march of a progress and prosperity, a new American dream, which we get more inflation. Oh crap! Please, no more inflation. Inflation, inflation. Casa Blanca catastrophe. Oh, that's a twist. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Federal Reserve inflation, three point two percent. Eh, gonna want to lower it. 
but that's okay. Oh, Einstein visits Israel. If you want to read about that, go right ahead. Let's go and do this and criticize the invention. Invention? Invasion. Seems like they're holding out for now for the most part. U.S. criticizes Chinese in invasion? Sure. It's unlikely the Chinese government will heed this advice from their former island that has increasingly become a regional rival. It se remains to be seen if the U.S. will take any further action. So, aiding the Vietnamese. It's clear that with the China's strong foreign policy moves in the East Asian territory, a Chinese victory in Vietnam would be a disadvantageous, disadvantageous to our own interests, only strengthening Nanjing's power in the region and threatening our own position in the Asia-Pacific. Some officials have suggested a somewhat radical option for, of actively supplying communist Vietnam with small arms and other military aid through secret shipments in order to help prop them up in the fight against China, of course. This will, some have scoffed at such a suggestion, refusing, refusing it on the grounds of supplying communists or saying it could destabilize the region or, discovered by China, be a significant diplomatic crisis. Now, how, sh how should we proceed, Mr. President? We can't do it. Prepare to aid them. Oh, we're going to aid them. So, we're going to aid them. Uh, we're going to go straight interventionist here. When Truman gets out of the office and we get Mac Daddy... He's going to be like, mm-mm, we got to go. We got to go. We got things to do. Come on. It is 52. We're doing that. We're done here for now. Engineering. Uh, we could do this. Synthetic aperture guidance radars. That's not bad. We can wait for that. Uh, how about planes? Drop tanks. We got to wait on that. Helicopters. We might want to get some better helicopters. Heavy aircraft. We might do that. Okay, I was going to do large-scale jet engines. So we can help out ourselves later on. We got some advanced computer machines. People's victory in Sweden. Cool. Very cool. Uh, let's go grab some more research speed from vacuum tube computing. That'd be very nice. Naval Station San Diego. Thank you. And we're building up loads of civilian factories. This way we can build whatever we need, whenever we need it. If that's the case, keep building these states up. That'd be nice for now. And then maybe build them up, build them up, build them up. There you go. Uh, let's go ahead and trade away one fact. Uh, maybe a fa Oh, actually, hold on. Oh, we can't build rubber? Oh my goodness, really? Seriously, at least get one of these from Turkey. There you go. Uh, let's see what's going on here. We need some rubber. Now yeah, we can trade at least for one. That's why. Why not? Malaysia? Oh, actually. Eh, Russia's on fire, but we don't really care. What about Vietnam for now? We don't really like communists, but that's okay. Free France and the Accord. Under Charles de Gaulle, the pretended government of French West Africa has declared their intentions to retake their lost homeland. To accomplish this, de Gaulle is seeking allies to trying to secure official partnership with the Toronto Accord by supplying or applying to become a member of the Accord. How would you respond to neither application? Welcome. We will gladly welcome you in. Now the Toronto Accord is looking pretty good down in Africa. Free France joins the Accords together against fascism. You bet your butt we are. Now hopefully something bad happens in Germany in which we can uh, intervene, as some might say. And then I want to invade Cuba. Because, why not? Ceasefire. Franco dies. Sends our regards. Oh, my goodness. Actually, can I send you volunteers? I'd love to be able to send volunteers. No, we can't. That sucks. They're Marxist-Leninists. You guys are traditional. Hmm. Alright, well, whatever. Synthetic oil experiments. Very nice. We can actually build those finally. Uh, is a better artillery. Eh, get up upgrade with improved shells. That's kind of nice. What are we missing in terms of equipment? We're missing tanks, we're missing anti-tank, support equipment, and light tanks. Guns are looking pretty good. Encryption, nice. Let's get some more decryption now. We got five army XP, armor divisions. Uh, I'm not really sure why we have infantry here. Yeah, I'm not really sure why we have that on there. Don't really think we need it. I didn't even touch this stuff last time. Uh, go with four for now. I didn't even make any divisions yet. Wow, that's really bad of me. Uh, but we're probably going get to get involved in Asia before anyone else. Let's train this. Make one division at a time for armor. Because we already have some armor, so that's kind of nice. Now we need more guns. Ah, there we go. Should have done that a little earlier, but whatever. We have four at a time. Uh, start making some of this as well. Naval Station San Diego. Very nice. Very nice. Build it up in West Virginia. And let's get another focus going first. Let's see. Now, I love all this stuff. Legacy of the Pacific War. Submarine operations aren't too bad. I want to do uh, United States Army. Our country is only as good as its arms, and this fact has never been more relevant than it's in its historical epoch. As part of a global strategy against the Germans, we must rejuvenate every aspect of the U.S. Army. So, Naval Station San Diego. Though the Atlantic has, in recent times, become the more important naval arena to our nation's defense and strategy, we should not forget the importance of, the Pacific, of our Pacific fleet. The Japanese may be defeated, but now our former allies, the Chinese, are gaining confidence and filling the power vacuums left in East Asia. A proper modern naval modern base for our Pacific fleet is required, my apologies, and the naval base of San Diego must be upgraded to enhance our power projection in the Pacific. The seas will remain ours to control. I sometimes talk very, very, very fast, so I apologize about that. Just a little bit. Just a wee bit. Death of Eisman. Oh, oh well, whatever. And here, 
Carrier Fighter. Um, oh, oh, the elections. Victory over Japan Day. So on October 26, 1945, a date which will live in honor. Less than four years after the atrocity that was attack on Pearl Harbor, we saw justice served. The Japanese led a campaign of total fantasy, holding everyone but their own in the complete contempt. They thought nothing in the world. They thought nothing in the world could stop them. The Japanese atrocities of the Pacific War and even before should serve us as a reminder of things that. They may never be repeated. The crimes against peace and humanity can never be justified while we remember the sacrifice many American boys made. We also celebrate our long commitment to peace. We shall never hesitate to, in order to defend our freedom and liberty for the preservation of peace. Now, that's interesting. 36, 36, 36. Uh, carrier naval bombers. Do we not have carrier naval bombers? Uh, we might not. That's the thing between TWR, the Thousand Week Reich, and TNO. They got rid of naval bombers. Yeah, fighters, coasters, interceptors, stealth technologies. Um, yeah, we ain't got any. No naval bombers. Even in stockpile, we got none. So, how big can it be? Uh, D55 then. There you go. Cool. So, election. So this year's worth of campaigners led to this. Today we as Americans use our democratic right. We shall decide who our next president shall be. Whichever candidate is the first of 266 electoral votes shall be proclaimed as president-elect. It, excuse me, it is believed that the colonel is one of the biggest we've seen in a generation. Now who shall be our president-elect be? Shall the Democrats hold on to the presidency for another four years or shall the Republicans return to the White House? Upon election, the new president will not be instantly become leader, but inaugurated in January if you know anything about American politics, even slightly. The U.S. of America completes focus in 1940-52 uh, President elections. Mac Daddy, here we go. And we can also do this. Launch a coup in Cuba. This is going to be one of the worst things that probably could happen. Um, even though I do want to aid Vietnam. Uh, this is under Truman. We'll put this under Truman's administration. <laughs> MacArthur's been elected as leader of the new free world. So, if it goes poorly, Truman will be remembered for launching a... Of course. Despite our best preparations, the opposition has failed to gather the necessary support and failed to seize power. God, is history repeating itself? Jesus Christ. Well, goodbye, Truman. Charlie Chaplin returns! The actor filmmaker Charlie Chaplin, the most famous for his silent films from the 1930s, has returned to the U.S. after a trip to his home country, the U.K., for the world premiere of his latest film, The Limelight. While his popularity has declined from the meteoric, meteoric heights of the 1930s, he was nonetheless welcomed back to America by many as a hero of cinema. There have been growing rumors of possible consequences due to his alleged communist views. However, it seems that these were nothing more than gossip, and his chaplain returns to his life and work in the States without incident. Welcome back. Now we can go ahead and not do covert operations. I wonder if we actually did this. Do we have anything here for agency? Well, I guess we can go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and create the agency. I usually ask you guys what the name should be, but it's kind of obviously what it should be called. Uh, gets American supplies. Operation Ho Chi Minh. I'd give them some supplies, you know. They might mm, take out some loans and might uh, have a good time with it. You know, you never know. Well, god dang, that naval XP looking pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. I do have to say so myself. More submarinos? Great. Death of Wosichowski, President of the Republic of Russia. Sergei has passed away from tuberculosis. His father of VP and Anatoly Rogozin is not someone who can trust to act in the best interest of a free world. Yeah, let him sort it out. You know, he died at the age of 69. Nice, but not nice, since he died. Build him, build him, build him, build him. Very nice, very nice, very nice. I like that we get so much political power every day. I love it. Victory of the Zigarev. Hum, Havel, huh? Russian presidency. Okay, when's the change? Well, let's see what happens. And we'll get the House of Representatives, because we got to launch NASC NAXA. NAXA. But we need 100 political power to do that, which is quite a bit. Which I want to do, but what a Vietnam. Starts the U.S. resolution for ceasefire and withdrawal in Vietnam. We could try that. So, ceasefire? Yes, probably. C hey, the CIA has been created. Great. Vote yes. So, can I influence other people to vote my exact same direction? That'd be kind of nice. You can't do anything here yet, which is fine. Just get a little bit more uh, engineer company for now. We can always, always use better engineers, so. Back in computing machine. Let's go ahead and grab some encryption postcode modulations. Very nice. The U.S. Army, despite traditionally being the first and most important part of the military forces, the U.S. Army, the forces responsible for war on land, are perhaps the least tested of the three. While the Navy and Air Force clashed dramatically with the Japanese during the Pacific War, for the most of the conflict, the Army was relegated to more minor operations. That was until the invasion of the Japanese home islands commenced. In contrast to the sweeping and rapid wars of movement and encirclement in Europe, the U.S. Army fought a slow, brutal, methodical war of attrition while 
where dogged and fanatic Japanese defense was slowly destroyed inch by inch until the surrender. As valuable as this experience was, it has not given a more thorough it has not given a more thorough experience of modern warfare in general that the European powers have experienced. For now, with America protected by sea and air, the army is not as crucial, but as a more active involvement in Europe becomes more and more likely, the U.S. Army, smaller than its German counterpart, at least on paper, may have to expand and develop itself for the task ahead. This will defend. Awesome. Now, we got that done. Oh, but we can do Patton's Doctrine, Recruitment Drive, or Firepower Doctrine. Ooh. Anything over here for the coup? No. Anything down here? Containment of Nazism, the German Civil War, uh, presidential election stuff. Oh, what do we want? We want Pan's Doctrine? Dap, dap their military strategies. Or firepower. The strength of any given army can be found chiefly in its quantity of weapons. Our main strategy must be based on the utilize the greatest amount of firepower possible. Um, since I want to go to war with the Germans so badly, I don't know in future campaigns if I'll do the exact same thing against them. I want to go with Patton's Doctrine this time. Next time we'll go with Firepower. With Patton's Doctrine, I think it makes sense. If we want to fight the Germans, we might we might as well fight them with their same tactics, if not improve upon their tactics. So, Patton suggests that in order to defeat the Germans, we must adapt their military strategies. Our military must be must pivot to a doctrine called, or centered around rapid forward movement and the breaking of encirclements. Because we saw Firepower last time, which worked out for us, but... Fighting the Germans toe-to-toe -to -toe might prove that we have to do this. So, and also, let's see... We can improve main battle tanks. I should look at this a little bit more. Division speed, motorized attack and defense. A mobile logistics for less supply consumption, which is good. And then we get joint chiefs of staff. Even though this idea had modernized the old, which is okay. Experiment with rocket artillery, which looks actually really, really awesome. Turkestani Civil War. 10% more artillery attack, which actually is probably better for us. We could have done develop cruise missiles, but so now we can't do that. But honestly, bomber attack, and actually division attack 2% more. That's alright. You know, we don't have to have that. Next time, though. Next time. UN Vietnam. UN Vietnam resolution fails. The war continues for now. Well, oh, god dang it. Concentrated heavy artillery. That's okay. We don't really need that. Air. Army air cooperation. Disney's Peter Pan. Walt Disney is company of producer 14th animated feature film in the form of Peter Pan. Based on the play Peter Pan or the boy who couldn't grow up by J.M. Barry. Let's lead his fantasy adventure film. It is hope. We'll carry and continue Disney's success. Interesting. Uh, cooperation. Well, one of the following motorized flexibility. Oh, so we can do that eventually. And we want to get some air power eventually. Like paratrooper stuff. All right, cool. As long as we have trick stands capitulated, well, good luck for you. 55%, and we're going to need more political power so we can get House of Representatives. <sighs> Why did people vote no? I mean, come on, man. Do you want the Vietnamese out? You want more Chinese aggression? Am I talking about today's world, or am I not? Oh, what is this? Send some fighters? We get the, They get the Lincolns. Interesting. Federal Reserve. How's it looking? Looking fine. Yeah, we got to get this. At least 50% support. We got to wait. At this point, go ahead and y'all do yourselves. A little bit of lag. Cool. You guys stop training. Go ahead and go to... Boy, ceasefire. Oh, it just popped up. Cool. And there goes Turkestan Republic. Uh, ceasefire. Pending resolution. Vote yes. Sure, why not? Go and repair. That's not fine for now. Oh, we got another ship out. Great. Oh, we got an operator we can recruit. Joseph Atkins, uh, Infiltrator. Uh, we'll get Joseph just because he can help slow down the rate at which people take stuff from us. Inauguration of MacArthur. The leading general of the Pacific War has been sworn in as president. Millions throughout the country watched on their TV and listened on the radios as history was being made. Sworn in by Chief Justice Vinson. Vinson. MacArthur placed his hand on the family Bible as he said the oath of office. The Republicans have won back the White House for the first time since 1929. Can President MacArthur unify the Republicans under his leadership? Hail to the Chief. A little bit of lag. My God, this presidency exiled the Dutch government. Here we go again. Drum up war support. Oh, in the presidential democracy that is the U.S., the executive branch consisting of the president and their administration holds considerable power and is able to pursue its own specific agenda. As head of state and head of government, the president has had the responsibility and power to choose the different or choose the direction of the policy. Each possible president has their own political views and policy priorities, and so different presidents will have the different policy decisions that will appear. Drum up war support isn't bad, but we gotta we can do Operation Ho Chi Minh, but we're not gonna do that yet. Uh, let's see. Error refueling. It is 53, so... What are we gonna do? We're gonna get some of this encryption. Non-reciprocal rotary encryption. Very nice. MacArthur has been inaugurated. We got some decryption going. Let's go ahead and see if we can improve upon our tanks. More speed and reliability. Post-war suspension improvements. Sure, why not? Kyrgyzstan has been dissolved. And... We got plenty of fuel and plenty of naval XP, so we can stop doing this and go ahead and repair, guys. You'll be fine. Nice. 
Ah, oh, there's Mac Daddy, MacArthur's ministers. Oh, crap. So, so with the new president of power, the new set of ministers must be brought in to form the core of his government. Now, let's close it out. And, let's see. Resolutions, Invasion USA. Today, Invasion USA has hit the box office, given a chilling, if propagandized, look into a possible dystopian future. In it, an unnamed fascist enemy state assumed to be represent Nazi Germany invades the U.S. and Canada across the Atlantic, causing widespread destruction witnessed by many characters. As the defense of the nation against a fascist onslaught fails, the characters wake up back in the bar movie the movie began in, having hallucinated the events of the invasion, and as a result of these events, rush off to do their part to support the U.S. against outside threats. What a terrifying movie. Uh, let's see. Current pending resolution. There is none. And... Patent auction. Unfortunately, I will be right back. My apologies about that, everyone, but let us continue right where we were last and attempt to get some support for the Central Asian People's Republic. Um, well, the USSR is having a good time, but uh, Kazakh Socialist Republic? Probably not. But, of course, like normal, we had to get some more revolution in Baghdad. Okay, sure, why not? We're waiting for it to finish up Patton's, doct Patton's Doctrine. Prime Minister Geitskill, I think they want Social Democrats at Labour in the UK. Well, the Conservative Party. Huh. Uh, let's see. Ooh, the Free French Republic declared war on the Council of Sahara. Social Democrat. Oh, I don't know where Geitskill is. We'll know in a little bit, though. Ah, we have 100 political power, finally. So now, we can drum up war support if we really wanted to. Uh, Operation Ho Chi Minh. I really want to get over here, though. Oh, wait. Mmm. Can we not do that? Hold on, give it a day, maybe. Okay, so we must have been at... I guess you need to at least have a 101, then. Do that. There we go, 50, and then 55% is very good. And then we can go ahead and get some support. But let's first do this, Patton's Doctrine. Once we, of course, do our next one. Oh, uh, which will do no appeasement, probably. We get political power. So, the gravest mistake of the Western powers before the war was attendance to Hitler's every wish. That outlook has plunged Europe into darkness, but it ends here and now. The Germans will get absolutely no quarter from us. George's Patton is certainly one of the most more eccentric U.S. military planners, even leaving aside his unusual and ambiguous and seemingly sometimes positive opinion of Nazi Germany. At the same time, though, what he appears it is, he is innovative. Whether from his own mind or looking at the Germans' blitzkrieg in Europe... <clears throat> He has developed his own doctrine of mobile warfare. Motorization and speed, more than raw firepower, is seen as key. To outmaneuver, bypass, and encircle the enemy in a similar manner to what the Germans achieve in Europe. Unfortunately for him, though, there is little opportunity to test his ideas during the Pacific War, as fighting took place almost entirely on mountainous islands and without the wide open spaces needed for rapid mobile warfare. For future wars, notably against the Germans, however, a new doctrine that matches what the Germans could have been could have been very useful. Perhaps it's about time we look more seriously into what this madman has to offer. Maybe Patton's not all crazy. You think he's crazy? He's just crazy enough to win a war or two. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, go ahead and train if you need it. Uh, definitely they need it, but that's okay. Oh, look at Germany. They look like they're not having a good time. It is March. It, you know what that means. You're going to go bye-bye. Oh, he's trying to... Actually, what does the AI do sometimes? So they go with favored Himmler. They did all of this. Okay, so when I played as Germany and tried basically my goal ring run, I got over here. I even did, like... Ideal plan in Project 1. And we all did all this, but we didn't get time to favor Himmler and his vision overseeing Burgundy regions. Huh. And the... F well, the fear is dead. But then we had the Finnish Communist ban lifted. Oh! Okay, then. Well, good luck with that. Keep training if you need it. Even though most of you don't. And we're going to watch as they fall apart, hopefully. Oh, do you have an upgrade Omar? Probably not. Uh, become offensive. You'll be fine as an offensive person. Golden Square coup. Pro-Axis coup. Covert action in Baghdad. So, recent inventions in Baghdad are very worrying after the recent Republic Republican Revolution. A group of explicitly pro-Axis officers calling themselves the Golden Square have seized power in the country. It seems very likely that they will pursue an actively pro-German and Italian foreign policy, putting the Middle East in grave danger. While an invasion at this time may be even more destabilizing, the CIA may be able to remove them from power by supporting other groups. While a restoration of the monarchy is virtually impossible with the king having been executed, the Ba'ath Party is a powerful and popular faction within the country, and with their support it could come to power, left-wing Arab nationals may not be our most preferable ally, but surely better to have them than those who would work with the fascists. Support a coup? Why not? Let's get intervolved. Intervolved? Involved. Why don't we create Naxa first? I think that'd be good to do. Aiding v Oh, we can aid him again now. I think we're good for now. Yeah, I don't think Vietnam's going to be able to hold up too well, so... Even if it did activate Ho Chi Minh, they wouldn't be do very much. The Ba'ath's coup in... Oh, the, the funeral. And in Baghdad. It's a third coup d'etat. Very cool. Three coups? Huh. 
Man, it would be wild if we could send volunteers to Vietnam, but okay. Socialist, Revolutionary Instability, Sunni Shia Divisions, Kurdish Resistance, and of course, the normal, the tried, the true American designs. Cambodian Liberals win in 53. Who cares about Cambodia? Uh, unstable nation, that's pretty normal. Cambodia. Well, made in the USA. That's not bad. The French Revolution. Viva la Resistance. Oh, oh, there. Oh, look at that. Now that's a lot of demilitarized zone. Well, it's some. That's not a ton. But it's, it's a good amount. The Free Russian Movement, the Slavic Revolt. Oh, and it, things are falling apart, my friends. That's a beautiful thing. Let's crack Naxa. Beautiful. Let's see, nuclear strikes, drum up war, support, Federal Reserve. And everything's falling apart. We just like hold down, enter, and read it all. Third Spanish Republic, third time to charm. A Franco gone, and we got some engineer companies. Little by liberal, Adolfo Suarez. All right, well, whatever. It's 53. Um, we can probably get some better anti-tank. Let's go and grab that. And now we can get better army doctrine with support companies. More soft attack, plus 30%. And plus 15, more organization, not bad. But now we have some better encryption. How oh, we get some better decryption with chosen plain text attack. And then how about we get some better suspension systems. The end of French unrest. The French state stays. Oh boy. Uh, cool. And things are killing each other. The rudimentary composite ceramics. 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 Pretty good. Get rid of that. That just kind of ruins things. Uh, do that. That'd be good. And why do we have field hospitals here? If anything, you don't you definitely don't need field hospitals. I'll be honest, you really don't. If anything, you should get logistics or recon. But I'm gonna save recon for other stuff. Communist takeover of Serbia, Yugoslavia is coming back. We already have recon? No, we don't. That's okay. I'm gonna convert some of Hold on. You're all tanks. Wait. What? What? Um Huh. Well, we definitely have to work on these divisions. Actually, you know what? Leave one in. I actually don't leave one in. They're 18 combat width. Actually, you know what? Leave one in for now. So we get five more back. So then we can actually throw instead on here. Do we not have APCs? Maybe we have mechanized. Um. Hmm. Oh, mobile warfare. Oh, it's... Tw oh my god, 20? Okay, get rid of it. We actually get more organization by doing that. Wow. This is weird. This is very weird. And the guys are killing each other. Very cool. What's going on down here? The Syrian... Oh, Ukrainian collapsed. Oh, they're gone. Syrian collapsed. Oh my gosh, everything's falling apart. Uh, civil war in Western Russia. We have Palestine, the state of Israel. We have Jerusalem. Confederal districts. Collapse of the Caucasus. Very nice. And the end of Muscovine. Kaiser Jeep. So, the Willys Jeep has been a staple of the U.S. military for many years, provided a basic motorized transportation vehicle for the Army. Now, a merger between Kaiser Motors and Willys Overland Company has created a new automotive manufacturer, which will continue to be available to produce these vehicles for our armed forces. Great! Kaiser Jeep. Love it. But I really need more Army XP. Jesus Christ, that's so much. Uh, Gotten land still there. Uh, oh, and there goes the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. No appeasement. Good. Then we got more political power. Good. Improving battle tanks, logistics actually would be pretty, probably pretty good. But we're going to promote the American dream. America's greatest asset is the promise of a stable and dignified middle class lifestyle. In this new order, the white picket fence still remains a powerful symbol for people all over the country and all across the world. The American dream is one in which we must never wake up from. Hmm. It's more war support, might be pretty good as well. Uh, I want to do that. 10% more war support could put us over the top in the Chinese triumph of Vietnam. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that's definitely not what we want to see. And the Federal Reserve, looking good enough. I don't want to bother with that. Council of Sahara, we are still building up. Oh, we just got our refinery done. Nice. You know what? Make two. We can make some nuclear reactors, but make another one at the same time. 50. Uh, where's a good place to build some refineries? I'll say taxes, but we'll do New York. For now. Cool. I want to get more war support, but I'm tempted to get even more Senate support. I want to have a super majority, so it says we get more political power that way, right? So, DNA structure discovered, and intriguing discovery. Very good, very good. Uh, anything here? The Volga Manch Red Army is capitulated. Okay. You know what, you guys, just all of you train. Maybe we can get some more army XP that way. I wish I could send a vision somewhere to, like, support stuff, but... I don't think we're allowed to send volunteers. Albanian Revolution. A small slice of Europe has just been painted red. Gun-wise, we have a minus 1,000. Oh, what the type of flag is that? Now, that is interesting. Wow. Better encryption. Very good. 
Uh, it's almost it's 53 still. Nothing we can do there. Plane wise, uh, we get some transport planes, but we don't really need that right now. Uh, let's get better carrier fighters. That would be actually very, very, very ideal. There's so much else. I guess next up we'll jump up war support. And then suborbital sub sub rocket tests as well. A lot of future space decisions. Very good. Early rocket development. Yeah, launch, a test, satellite. 70% chance, 30% chance of failure. Not bad, not bad. You guys come over here. And train, everyone. Train. Central Asian People's Republic has capitulated. In which we get... Okay, point one a day. So, Senators, criticize policy. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, let them complain. We lose political power. All right, let's take a look at the Senate. Hit back. Okay, it went up. 65%. Great. We lost 50 political power, but you know what? It was worth it. That was definitely worth it. Oh, 47% world war support because world tension goes up. Wallman's position solidified. Oh, the shadows. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Crystal purges. Um, the great power struggle is still not done. And Himmler still exists. So, no guy has... No guy. Hmm, sounds familiar. Spying on the leadership. The coronation of Elizabeth II. Very good. Very good. They reform themselves. They've got some infighting. Ec economic stagnation. Everyone and their brother in the East is dying. House criticizes policy. Hit back. Oh my goodness. So we have 50%. And we got 5 more percent for 50 political power, which is not what I really wanted, but you know what? I'll take that as a victory. And let's get some early auto lowers, auto loaders for more piercing. That's not bad, more soft attack. That's always nice stuff to get. Come on. High Congress support. There we go. With a majority of supportive Congress members in both the House of Representatives and the Senate, the political power of our administration has been significantly boosted by 25%. God dang, son. That just means I have to keep my political power high in both parties. I feel like Huey Long bribing people to support us no matter what. Is that a problem? Not really, no. Home of the brave, my friends. We are not afraid of those who oppose us, and we are not insecure in our cap capabilities. Well, w what will carry us into the future above all else is our national strength. That takes 70 days. Wow, that's a long time, man. That is quite a long day. Or a long time, I should say. Alright, so, I want APCs, but my goodness. Oh, not artillery. What the heck? That's going to cost us so much just to get APCs. Why? I'm not going to grind these guys down, but Jesus, why does it take so long? But we get quite a bit every day, so it could be worse. Look at that free French Republic. I should have sent volunteers to you guys. Jesus Christ. Spirit of the free French. It looks pretty good. Uh, minority state? That doesn't look very good. Stars of the struggle? Oh, start of the struggle. Start of the struggle. Poor industrial capabilities. God, I should have felt them up, but that's really nice. The free French Republic is looking pretty good. The French state, of course, still exists, unfortunately. Oh, led by not Wagon anymore, but Charles Nogoy's uh, infantry equipment. Nice. Grab some better support weapons, too. That gives us more breakthrough, which is what we absolutely need. Uh, Kazakh Republic. Oh, sub subordinable rocket tests? Yes, please. Fighter 1 CVs. Get some fi I almost never use carrier fighters. Naval attack is not great. It's not bad. Just not optimal, I would say. Drop tanks are okay. How about we get some better maintenance companies? Very nice. And, yes, please. Are we not making any? Oh, we're making plenty of stuff here. That's good. Cruiser holes. Suborbital rocket experiments. Amer American military and scientific sectors had already been experimenting with basic sounding rockets for some time. These rockets are small in size, similar to the German ballistic missiles, able to travel into space on a suborbital tra trajectory and collect scientific data about the vacuum in space. Now with an extra injection of his funding, NAXA has further pushed experimentation into suborbital rocketry. We cannot fall behind. Pretty much, pretty much. Stack bombers would be nice. Tack bombers. Yeah, I don't know why they got rid of naval bombers. I guess, do we not use naval bombers anymore? I think we still do that in real life, don't we? I think it's still pretty important, aren't they? Wow. Mm, maybe we'll do a little bit less on APCs and focus on other things, maybe? M maybe? <laughs> Reduces our need on rubber, which is good. Get a few more things for that one. Uh, build up some more refineries. Two at a time. And... I guess build up Texas, why not? We get more fuel, we get more oil, which we don't really need. Fuel and oil are the same thing, basically. We get more oil, we get more aluminum, but it help us when we need to produce up there. Association of the Freed was annexed by the Free Russian Movement, or the Free Russian Movement, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't speak right now. Hey, here we go, the German Civil War, the Brugge Krieg Stats, Emergency Valstadt declared war on the Schutzstaffel Altstadt. Ah, this is what we want to see, the Emergency Valstadt, go to German Reich, and then, that's a lot of, okay, they came out. Bestland. Wait, what is this? The German Civil War. Reichs 
Berserka Vestland, led by Feldmeier. And of course, led by Hemley, Hemi Hempler, Monstein, and then we have, well, Ballman. Multi population goes way down. Wow. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, liberal victory in Canada and the German Civil War. Economic shock with the out outbreak of civil war in Germany. Major shocks have hit the global economy. Trade between the West and German-dominated Europe, although already far below pre-39, 1939 levels, ground entirely to a halt as the European continent collapses into total anarchy. Already scarce resource imports from mainland Europe have been cut to zero instantaneously, leading to a sudden increase in costs for some American firms. Inflation has shot up as a result. Oh no, the line on the graph. Oh crap. Actually, that's not good. Uh, Federal Reserve. Oh, inflation's not bad. So to decrease inflation. A higher interest rate will lead to a reduction in inflation. We need higher interest rates then. Oh, I don't want to spend political power on this, but so be it. Early auto lower. Early auto loaders. Very good. Get some better APCs because we're going to use them eventually. More speed, more reliability. That'd be nice. Very, very nice. We still get 1.82 a day, which is not bad. But I really want to finish up Home of the Brave. Toronto Accord Council emergency meeting. With the outbreak of civil war in Germany, sending shockwaves around the world, leaders of the Toronto Accord nations are meeting at a special emergency meeting in Toronto to discuss the situation in a semi-secret meeting. In it, the alliance will debate possible intervention and other actions to be taken. The U.S. delegation represents the primary member, which will give its thoughts first. Immediate intervention. We're not ready, but we must prepare. To hell with we are not ready. We are good to go, son. Let's go ahead. I want to get through at least one more focus before we do anything else. The Baltic Confederation, great. Immediate infiltration does not intervene. What? What? Though so some parties supported immediate intervention, others were opposed and a general agreement could not be met. The meeting has ended without the council deciding to intervene immediately and said the accord will adopt a policy of preparation and mobilization and future intervention or war in this tense time is so likely. What the? We are limited by our allies. Screw the UN now. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? Oh my goodness, really? Are you serious? The time to strike is now! It's now! When they're weak! We can achieve global domination. I mean, peaceful peace and stability for our time and freedom. Yes, those words. Oh my goodness. Presidential mandate? Complete focus 52 to 56 policies. Well, that's kind of cool. We'll probably do that next. A containment of Nazism. Begin area reconnaissance. Space operations. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Infiltrate Nazi Europe. Guarantee Turkey. Back the French. Ooh, I like that. Overtures to Italy. Weapons to the Soviets. Oh. Or we have over here. The German Civil War. Activate the reserves. Which we're kind of okay for now. Supply anti-German rebels. They have not popped out yet. Support people's, people's Germany. Okay. Begin aerial reconnaissance. Activate the reserves. Aid British armament. North Sea military uh, exercises. Expand the Toronto forces. Cool, guys. Um, I want to let you know. Or ask you guys. What should we do? What should our next focus be? Should we expand the Toronto Accords? Should I focus on the German Civil War right now? Or should we wait until there's a potential war between us and the Germans later on? Let me know. Do we want to get nuked later so that way we can nuke Germany? Or should we just kind of watch things happen and not go on a great crusade yet? Let me know in the comments below. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will see what the Toronto Accords do. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.